say. Let's do Watch Ye Saints. And that's on page um, 598. Yes, 598. Sinners come for Christ is pleading now for you is interceding makes their praise and time can finish shall proclaim the mystery finish Lo, he comes Lo, Jesus Let's do 600.
604 for opening. We know not the hour. We know not the hour. 604. If we'll stand, please. Say it. That is true. We know not. Let's 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 humbly bow our hearts and our heads for those who can kneel and for those who can't. Just remember whose presence that we are in. We're in the presence of a holy God and loving Father in heaven. Thank you again. What a privilege. Thank you again for getting us just through another day, Lord. Oh, Father, you kept us, you provided, and you watched over us every step of the way. Lord, you met every need that we didn't even deserve to be met. You kept us, Lord. You kept back Satan's powers from us. And we, many of us face temptations today. I, I know I had a day off, and I just stayed at home. And, and it was just a privilege, Lord. I, I, I didn't even know what to do with myself. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I know it. we're always just ripping and running. 
never really take time to sit at your feet. And so tonight is another opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear what your servant, your messenger, will speak to thy people. Lord, may your Holy Spirit be with us. And we just pray for those who, who are sick at heart and are stand at home and don't know that fellowshipping is a very vital, important part of our bodies because we are social beings. I just pray for those who are still yet on their way. And Lord, I just ex especially ask for forgiveness for our, our shortcomings today and, and our unchristlike words and thoughts and things that we have said or thought or spoke to anyone about. We need to be careful. We need to watch and pray. So thank you for this time that we will have tonight together. Thank you that the doors are still open. And thank you that we still have the freedom. Because even that's going to be taken one day. We know not the day nor the hour. But we know that you are returning soon. And we want to be ready. Thank you for hearing and answering. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening again, and as Denise just prayed, what a blessing and a privilege it is to be here. Um, once again, we're going to take an offering, and if you have anything that you, uh, the Lord has impressed upon you to help us uh, continue doing what we do here at Community Hope, we just pray as Brother Aaron comes around. Come on, Brother Aaron. about you, but I was like my wife. I woke up this morning thinking, uh, thinking about that rich run, young ruler, you know, and I thought about that all day long. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank the Lord for uh, using Brother Narlin to uh, get that into our minds and that, that thinking. You know, we, we think we have it all together, but we really don't when we take an honest look at ourselves. Thank you, Brother Aaron. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, again, uh, what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. And Lord, as we uh, have just collected an offering, we just pray that you would uh, bless this offering, Heavenly Father, and use it to uh, further your soon return. And we thank you in Jesus' name. to wake you up. Can you mute the microphone? Mute the microphone. Mike is off. It's unmuted. All right, let me say good evening to everyone. It's always a blessing to be with you all, and I'm grateful for the privilege of sharing God's words. Tonight again, as we will be having all this week, it's a very solemn and thought-provoking message. Before we begin, I want to share with you just a few things here. I'm not, this is, uh, 
our annual camp meeting that's coming up June 30th to July 4th. And again, for those who are watching via live stream for the first time, or if there's somebody join us for the first time tonight, our camp meeting is in Stanton, Kentucky. We have a ministry called Red River Outpost. And this year, uh, we're going to be focusing specifically on preparation. This is the theme that we'll keep every year, the time and the work. But this year, we're focusing specifically on preparation. We're going to be talking about giving natural remedies, demonstration, focus on practical end time preparation, such as uh, canning and food preservation, agriculture. And the guest speakers that we have this year is Dr. Olatunji, Dr. Thomas Jackson, myself will be there, Dr. Mark Sandoval, Steve Dickman. So we are expecting a special blessing from the Lord. Now, we also are have a ministry, my wife and I, a personal ministry. If you'd like to contact us personally, this is our contact information, treeoflifeministries.org. There you'll find our calendar where we'll be, as well as our email addresses here, info at treeoflifeministries.org. And lastly, um, we have, this is our contact information for our ministry in Kentucky, Red River Outpost. And our, in, our email address is info at redriveroutpost.org. And we will have business cards following the message tonight as well. And if you want to keep up with our happenings, visit us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Red River Outpost. There you find a lot of valuable information. Now, again, our series for this week is entitled Beholding Christ Through the Biographies. Beholding Christ Through the Biographies. Now, before we kneel, let's just bow our heads and I want to share with you a text that kind of summates what our ultimate goal is this week. Father, bless these words, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 12, I invite you to turn there with me. John, chapter 12. I want you to notice what the Bible says in John 12, verse 20 and verse 21. John 12, verse 20 and verse 21. This summates the objects of what we're sharing this week. Now, are you guys hearing me? I'm not hearing myself clearly, but are you guys hearing me clearly? Uh, if it's possible to get a little bit more volume on the mic, that would be a blessing. John 12, verse 20, the Bible says, And there were certain Greeks among them and came to worship at the feast. Now, if you study this, you realize that it's not a custom for Greeks to come and worship with Jews. But they took this bold step to come and worship with the Jews. And I want to share with you the reason why. And this is the objective of what we are sharing this week. Notice what it says now in verse 20. The Bible says in verse 21, the same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, I want you to notice these words, Sir, we would see Jesus. So these groups, Greeks, came and worshipped with the Jews because they said, Look, we want to see Jesus. Now, my friends, I want to share with you that this entire week, the objective of what we are sharing is that we want to see Jesus. So no matter who we're looking at this week, whether it's Barabbas or whether it's Solomon or whether it's the woman at the well or whether it's the rich young ruler, the object is that we would see Jesus. In fact, when you look at the Mount of Transfiguration, the book of Matthew chapter 17, the Bible says that they saw the disciples, they saw Elijah and they saw Moses and they concluded by saying, we see Jesus only. And I pray that tonight and the rest of the week that I'll be moved out of the way and that the rich and the ruler will be moved out of the way, and that Barabbas will be moved out of the way, and that we all may see Jesus. Let us pray together. Father, we're asking for a special blessing tonight, Lord. Pour out your spirit tonight, Lord. We're in need of your Holy Spirit, Father. Fill us. And I pray, oh God, in a special way also, that you will allow your angels to come and worship with us and dispatch any dark forces that tries to hinder us what you desire for us to have tonight, Lord. I pray that the words may be speaking with power and also conviction. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our specific subject tonight in the series Beholding Christ with the Biographies, our specific subject tonight is the biography of Barabbas. The biography of Barabbas. 
Now, our theme text for the week, you'll notice we're going to share this every single night. Notice what it says here. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime. In other words, they were written before. Why were they written? They were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Our next scripture, which is another theme scripture, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. The Bible says, for now all these things happen unto them, who are them, the persons that were before us. For what? For in samples. That word in samples means types. But then it goes on to say, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So again, the, the things that were written before time, the characters that has been revealed through Scripture, the Bible is saying that they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So as we look at these Bible characters, my brothers and sisters, don't forget that there's something in them that God wants to share in light of us. There's something in our lives that Christ wants to draw out through the characters of these biographies. Now, why are these biographies so important? Notice what it says in the book, Education, page 146. It says, as an educator, no part of the Bible is of what? Talk to me. Greater value than are its biographies. Now, as you assess this statement, is it important then for us to draw out these points that God has in these biographies? Yes or no? It is essential. Now, as I have been looking at these biographies, I find that there is an importance in the names that God has given us in these biographies. In other words, when you look at the, the person's name, you notice that there is great significance in these names. A perfect example, in the book of 1 Samuel 25 and verse 25, you can write it down. 1 Samuel 25, verse 25, the Bible says, Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. And then it goes on to say, for as his name is, so is he. What is this saying? This is saying that in the Bible, names represent character. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. And for it says, for as his name is, so is he. So we see then that there, there's great significance in the names that God has given us through these biographies. Now, let's look at another example. Go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 32. Let, let's see the importance of names. Again, our subject is the biography of Barabbas. We're turning to the book of Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And I want you to notice what the Bible says, picking up in verse 27. Genesis 32, verse 27. Bible says in the book of Genesis 32 and verse 27, it says, And he said unto him, What is thy what? What is thy? Name. Thy name. And he said, Jacob. In verse 28, the Bible said, And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Now when you look up that word, Jacob, that word Jacob means, yeah, come from the uh, Hebrew word Yaakov, which means heel holder or supplanter, deceiver. But God changed his name from deceiver and heel holder to Israel or Yisrael, which means God prevailed. So God is saying, I saw that you were a heel holder. I saw that you were a supplanter. I saw that you were a deceiver, but now you have wrestled with God all night, and you said, I will not let this go, let you thee go until thou bless me. And because of Jacob's wrestling with God, God says, you are no longer a deceiver. I see that your character has changed, and now you shall be called Israel because you have wrestled with God and you have prevailed. Names are important. Another one is in Matthew 1, verse 21. The Bible says in Matthew 1, verse 21, and they shall, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people, not in their sins, but what? But from their sins. And when you look up that word, Jesus, it comes from the Greek word, Yeshua, which means Jehovah is salvation. Name 
represents character. Again, our subject is the, bi 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 the biography of Barabbas. And we're looking specifically, my brothers and sisters, how this applies to us as God's people in these last days. Now, as parents, when we know that a child is on the way, we go through this routine, as in fact most of us do, we, 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 we are saying, Lord, this is what I desire for my child. And we get a concordance. We begin to look through the concordance and try to find a name that's fitting for the child. And then we choose that name and select that name based on what we believe that child should be. And we go through this exercise. Why? Because we want our child's character to be represented by the name. My daughter's name is Hannah. And that word Hannah means grace. That word Hannah means, means grace. Now the blessing for all of us is when you go to the book of Revelation chapter 14, you can go there very quickly, and you, if you notice in verse 1 of Revelation chapter 14, the Bible says that we should have the Father's name written in our foreheads. That word name comes from the Greek word anoma, which means authority or character. The Bible is saying that we should have God's name, God's character, God's authority written in our foreheads. Now, as we're in the book of Revelation, go to chapter 2 with me. This is one of my favorite texts, very sweet text, and most of us don't realize it's tucked away nicely in the book of Revelation. But notice what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 17. This is so precious, my brothers and sisters. Very beautiful text. Revelation 2 and verse 17, the Bible says, And he, hath, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a, uh, uh, and, and, and will give him a white stone. And listen. And in the stone, what does it say, my friends? A new name, a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. Now, I'm not sure if you see this, my brothers and sisters, but this is beautiful. You know, in our home, we have these secret pet names for one another. You know, we have these secret pet names for our wives. We have these secret pet names for our children. And you, 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 you don't want those names to be exposed in the public. It's just, it's just something between you and your family. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, some of us might be calling our wives Pookie. Uh, some of us might be calling our, our wives sugar dumpling or honey bun. In fact, right before we came, my daughter and I, we were going through a whole thing. I was like, you are my, you are my Julie Mango. You are my Medjool Date. You are my maple syrup. <laughs> you are my East Indian mangoes. Right, honey? You, we're, we're just doing that. So we, we, we have these secret and these pet names that we only want to stay within the confines of our doors. God is saying, you know what, I have a secret name just between you and I. Look, look, this is a white stone. I, I can imagine God the Father coming over and, 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 putting his, and, and, and Jesus and putting his arm around us. And as we look at that white stone, you see that secret name just between you and God. And God is saying, this is just between you and I. This God is precious, my brother and sisters. He's real. God says, I will give you a new name. And it's only a name that you and God will know. Isn't God, isn't God wonderful, my brother and sisters? Uh, speaking of names, now in the book of Matthew chapter 27, go there with me, Matthew chapter 27, are you guys following me so far, amen? amen. Now we, you know, you know we always have a connection, amen? Matthew chapter 27, and notice what the Bible says in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 27. We're talking about how names have great significance in the Bible. What's our subject tonight? The biography of? of Barabbas. So in Matthew chapter 27, now in verse 16, the Bible says, And they had then a noble prisoner called Barabbas. We see a strange name. Now name, as we mentioned, has great significance in the Bible. And you're going to see, my brother and sister, that name Barabbas, has great significance, not just in that time, but also for you and I today. Barabbas. 
What a strange name. By the way, does anyone know what that name Barabbas means? That word Barabbas comes from the Greek word bar, which means son, and Abba, which means father. So in other words, Barabbas' name was son of father. Son of father. What a strange name. Now, we say Barabbas, but you, you have to translate it. You know, in, 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 in uh, Mark 14, verse 26, Jesus says, Abba, Father. So when he's Babar, which means son, and Abba, Father, his name is Son of Father. Now, now we, we say Barabbas, but I want you to just imagine you're in class, and as you're in class, the teacher says, we're going to do a roll call. Then it says, Matthew, here, present. Mark, yeah. present. Andrew, Present, uh, Samantha, present, Hannah, present, son of father. Are you guys getting the picture here? So his name, his name was literally son of father. I can imagine he's, he, he, the, the teacher is speaking to him and says, son of father, did you do your homework this week? Son of father, why are you coming to class late? Son of Father, I'm going to call your parents because you have not been behaving in class. I can imagine it's time to play, and the, and the children are saying, Son of, son of Father, let's, let's go now. It, 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 it's time for our recreation. You guys get the picture? His name was Son of Father. Very strange name. But remember, name has great significance in the Bible. His name was Son of Father. Now, theologians has two different varying views as to why his name was Son of Father. One view is they say, well, maybe his, his parents thought that he was a Messiah. And in most cases, you know, the, you're, you're, you're related to your mother. You're, you're, you're your mother's son. But in this case, they said Son of Father. They know that he was birthed by the Holy Spirit. So they're, they're saying maybe this is the, the Messiah. So let's just call him Son of Father. Maybe he is a chosen one. Maybe he is the one that we've been waiting for. Maybe he is the Messiah. Let's name him Son of Father. Well, we see that he was actually quite the opposite. He, in fact, he was the direct opposite of what Jesus was. So we see that that, that, that reasoning was not true. She, she might have thought that, but he was definitely not the Messiah. The other reasoning, which seems more likely, is the fact that Maybe they, 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 they came to the time when the child was about to be born, and, and, and as they began to think about it, they, they, the mother came up with a name, and the father came up with a name, and the grandparents came up with a name, and, and they could not come to a conclusion. So they said, you know what? Let's just call him son of father, which is a sign of inconclusiveness in light of the name. So he was just called son of father, this young man. Barabbas, son of father. Now, by the way, um, there's a lot of things that I know, a lot of strength that I know I have, but um, I am not good at prophesying or predicting or being a prophet. Amen? Now, why do I say that? When my, my, when my daughter was getting ready to be born, my wife and I, we did it the old-fashioned way. We didn't want to know what the sex was, so we waited till the child came out before we knew what sex it was going to be. So, in my estimation, I just, I just had these strong instincts and these, these strong intuitions. I, I knew for a fact in my mind that it was going to be a boy. So, you know, as we were planning names and so on and so forth, we, we had the name picked out, uh, D Joshua Levi. That's the name, Joshua Levi. And my wife, you know, we, she began to come up with names for, for, for a girl. I said, oh, honey, we don't have to worry about that. I, I, I'm, I'm confident. That's going to be a boy. And to our pleasant surprise. <laughs> now, I wanted a girl, by the way. I, I didn't want a girl, but to our pleasant surprise, truly a pleasant surprise, when my daughter came out, we were caught completely off track. Why? Because of my prophetic instincts and intuition. Don't hire me to be a prophet. Amen? So, so, so now, my, 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 my precious daughter came out, and for eight days, she was just known as baby girl. 
It wasn't until day eight that my wife and I came up with the name Hannah Noel. Grace. Her name is Grace. Don't hire me to be a prophet. So, so now, this, this, this young man, my brothers and sisters, this, this young man, he had this name, this, 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 this weird name, son of father. Son of father. What a name. Son of father. Now, uh, where I went to school, they call it the hood or the ghetto. Right? And um, when your name is not considered normal, you're mocked. You're, you're teased. You're, you're ridiculed. And I, I can imagine that son of father had a name in Far Rockaway, Queens. I, I, I could imagine somebody coming to school in, in Far Rockaway, Queens, the hood of New York, where I grew up, and, and he comes to class with his name son of father. I could, I, I could tell you that he'll be in deep trouble with the name son of father. Now, my name's kind of weird as well, Norlin. Uh, but, you know, because I, I played basketball and I was pretty popular because of my basketball skills, maybe that's why I wasn't teased. But the, it, recent studies have shown that those who are teased and those who are mocked in school, they, 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 they grow up to be hardened criminals and commit heinous crimes. In fact, let me show you the research. It says here, being victimized at any point in time was associated with high, high odds of delinquency, substance abuse, arrest, Convictions in late adolescence and adulthood, turn to life science. But chronic victims, those who were bullied in childhood and adolescence, had the highest odds of adverse legal outcomes. Now I wonder, I wonder, I, I just wonder if for some reason, because Barabbas, son of father, had this, this weird name, this, 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 this strange name, Son of father, I wonder if he was mocked and, and teased and, and ridiculed and, and bullied in his childhood and adolescence. And as a result, that, that helped to turn the tides in, in his Christian outcome. I wonder. We'll never know. But he had this name, son of father. Now we're in Matthew 27 still. I want you to notice what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 27. Now notice what it says in verse 15 and verse 16. The Bible says, in verse 15, now at the feast, the governor was one to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. So Barabbas was not just a prisoner. The Bible says that he was a, a notable prisoner. In fact, go to the book of Mark. Let's just look at a little bit about the life of Barabbas. Go to the book of Mark now. Mark chapter 15, verse 6 and 7. Mark 15, as we continue to bark upon the subject, the biography of Barabbas. Mark 15, verse 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired, and there was one named Barabbas, which was bound, and it says, what did he do? He made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. So as we look at the life of Bar Barabbas, we see that the Bible says that he was a notable prisoner. The Bible says that he was a, a murderer. The Bible says that he committed insurrection. In fact, in the in book of Luke chapter 23, verse 19, the Bible says he also committed sedition and murder. So we see here it is that Barabbas now, the Bible says that he was a murderer, insurrection, a notable prisoner, and the Bible also says that he was a robber. In the book of uh, John 18 and verse 40, the Bible says, Now Barabbas was a robber. So as, as you look at this, 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 this young man, this relatively young man, he was a, a, a notable prisoner. He was a murderer. He committed insurrection. He committed sedition. He was also a robber. He was a notable prisoner, my brothers and sisters. In Acts 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, But he denied the Holy One and just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Caught up in murder, robbery, sedition, and insurrection. Now that word sedition means defiance, rebellion, rioting, and strife. Insurrection means civil disobedience. 
a violent uprising against an authority or government. In other words, if Barabbas was alive in 2020, 2021, he would have stormed the Capitol, my brothers and sisters. An uprising against government and, and civil authority. In fact, we're told, in, when you look it up in the, in, 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 in the Greek, when you look up the word Barabbas, the, Bible, the, 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 the word Barabbas also translates to the fact that he was an Israelite. I want you to think about this. He was an Israelite. Are you thinking with me? An Israelite that committed murder and robbery and sedition and, and insurrection. Uh, this, this was, uh, he was raised in Israelite, my brothers and sisters. He might have been frustrated with the Roman bondage. And maybe he said, you know what, I'm going to take matters in my own hands. He says, I, 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 I'm sick and tired of being bound by the Roman yoke, and I'm sick and tired of my people being, being, being locked up and, and imprisoned, even though they might feel free. He says, look, I'm going to take this matter into my own hands. And he says, I'm going to fix this problem. And in the midst of trying to overthrow the Roman government, we're told that he stormed the Roman outpost, and in the midst of it, he committed murder, my brothers and sisters. When you read in Easton's Bible Dictionary, it's also told that he was like Robin Hood. He robbed the rich and, and he gave to the poor, Barabbas, son of father, a murderer and a thief. I can imagine that he found justification in his behavior. I am, I'm, I'm helping the people of God. We are God's chosen people. I need to fix this issue. Barabbas, son of father. Murderer, robbery, insurrection. Israelite. Dare I say that Barabbas was a Seventh day Adventist? And how? Now, I want you to think with me, my brother and sister. Look up the word in the Greek. It says Barabbas was an Israelite. How did the Seventh day Adventist? who grew up in a church, get to the point in life where he's a murderer, insurrection, sedition, robbery, my brother and sister. How did this, this Seventh-day Adventist, by the way, if you grew up as an Israelite boy, as I mentioned last night, just like the rich young ruler, that means you had to have the Pentateuch committed to memory by the age of 12. That means Barabbas had Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, he had these five books of the Bible committed to memory verbatim. Grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist church. And now, a murderer, a robber, sedition, and insurrection. How, how did the Seventh-day Adventists come to this, my brother and sister? You know what makes matters worse? He grew up in a time of two of the mightiest men to ever walk the earth. He grew up in a time of John the Baptist and Jesus. That means Barabbas, it's possible, could have literally heard from the very lips of John the Baptist, bringing therefore fruits worthy of repentance. That means he could have sat at Jesus' feet, my brothers and sisters, and heard the words, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That means, my brothers and sisters, he could have saw the blind being healed, the deaf beginning to hear, the lame beginning to walk, the dead beginning to rise. He literally saw it with his own eyes, great, with great power, the Messiah that literally walked this earth. It's great possible, my brothers and sisters, that Barabbas saw two of the Christ is the mightiest, along with John the Baptist, one of the mightiest men, he could have literally saw and heard them face to face. And obviously, if he heard them, he did not heed them. You guys catch that? We also hear them, my brothers and sisters, but the question is, are we heeding them? Barabbas, son of father, murderer, insurrection, sedition, robbing. How did the Seventh-day Adventists come to this, my brothers and sisters? And by the way, not only did he uh, hear them and grew up in that time, 
Barabbas was actually around the same age as John the Baptist and Jesus. Jesus and John the Baptist were only six months apart. And it, it, it could be very well that Barabbas was literally around the same age as John the Baptist and Jesus. He, he had great opportunity, my brothers and sisters, to, to turn his life and to change his life and to not go in that direction because he literally saw and heard and was around two of the mightiest men to ever walk the earth. A seven-day Adventist. So my question is this, how did this happen? How did this seven-day Adventist Israelite, become a murderer? How could this Seventh-day Adventist, born and raised in a church, memorized in a Pentateuch, how did this Seventh-day Adventist become a notable person? How did this Seventh-day Adventist become a robber? How did this Seventh-day Adventist commit uh, sedition and insurrection? How did this Seventh-day Adventist come to this, my brother and sister? Is that a good question? Well, let me tell you this. No man comes to sudden ruin. Y'all catch what I'm saying? To sudden ruin. No man comes to sudden ruin. It is a gradual process. You know, you could actually boil a frog to death if the heat is turned up gradually. No man comes to sudden ruin. It is a gradual process. So as we look at the life of Barabbas, who grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, he didn't just one day wake up and say, you know what? I'm the son and I'm going to be a murderer today. He didn't just one day just say, you know what? I'm going to throw these scrolls down and I'm going to go out and become a robber. He didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to throw the scrolls down, and I'm, all of a sudden, I'm going to be, commit insurrection and sedition. You know what? I didn't, he didn't just say one day, I'm going to throw down the Bible in the spirit of prophecy, and I'm going to become a notable prison. No, my brothers and sisters, no man comes to sudden ruin. Are you guys catching what I'm saying tonight, my brothers and sisters? So what am I saying? It was very gradual, step by step. And those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and also worldly customs will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be. That's volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 81. Those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and worldly customs will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be. It was a step by step process. In fact, I remember... When I came into the church, this was 1996, in 2001, I began to go through some things, and I began to gl blame God for my problems, and slowly but surely, I began to walk away from God. Now, I remember one Friday night, in the midst of my gradual apostasy from God and his principles, I remember I was starting to watch a basketball game on a Friday night. And that Friday night, I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, it was one of the worst feelings in the world. I felt, literally, I felt like the earth was going to open up and swallow me up. I felt like a lightning or a thunderbolt was going to come down and smite me. I felt my life was in peril. I was scared, literally scared and nervous. I, I, I kept the TV on, but my mind was not there. I was just thinking, Nolan, what are you doing? Next week, it became a little bit easier. The following week, a little bit easier. The following week, easier. Before you know it, I can watch the basketball games on a Friday night without any thought provoking me. How did it happen? Gradually. Let's go back to Barabbas now, this Seventh-day Adventist. How, how in the world, my friends, did this Seventh-day Adventist become a murderer? Let's just, let's just begin to think now. Let's just begin to think. 
Now, the Bible says it's, it's, it's hard to kick against the pricks. The Bible says the way of the transgression is hard, my brothers and sisters. Jesus makes it hard in us. In other words, he pricks our consciences. He touches our hearts, and he, he, he moves upon our hearts, and he, he works in providence, and, and he's like that GPS. You know what that GPS does when you're off track? It says rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. And before you know we get frustrated with that GPS, and you know what we do? We turn it off, and that's what we do to God, my brothers and sisters. But the Bible says the way of a transgression is hard. God makes it hard on us, my brothers and sisters. He comes seeking after us. And praise God for that. Remember, Adam did not go looking for God. God came looking for Adam. Are you with me? And that question I was asked of Adam, where are you, Adam? He was not asking for geographical location. It was uh, is a question that triggered a thought of spiritual separation. When God is saying, Adam, where are you? He says, look, I know where you are physically, but where are you spiritually? It's not a geographical location question, my brothers and sisters. It's a spiritual separation question. And God is saying, Adam, where are you? So as you look at Barabbas now, my brothers and sisters, he grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist church, understood and, and believed the Bible, believed the spirit of prophecy, had the principle committed to memory. So how in the world now this, this seven-day Adventist became a murderer and a noble prisoner? How did it happen? Well, could it be that one day Barabbas missed devotion? And then he said, yo, you know, uh, I'll catch it tomorrow. And then tomorrow happens, and he said, you know what, uh, I'll, 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 ma I'll, I'll make sure I catch it next week. And then next week comes, and he said, you know what, I, I, I'm so busy. Next month, I, I'm definitely going to get back on track. Next month comes, and he says, oh, man, this is, this is such a rough year. My New Year's resolution, this, my New Year's resolution is that I'm going to get back on track with studying the Bible. New Year's come, my birthday. My birthday is the end of the year. So definitely on my birthday, I'm going to have a new birth with Christ. Are you guys catching what I'm saying? No man come to sudden ruin, my brothers and sisters. Barabbas did not wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to be a murderer tomorrow, my brothers and sisters. It was a gradual process. No man comes to sudden ruin. Are you guys listening to me tonight, my friends? Barabbas was an Israelite who became a murderer. Someone says, I will never commit such a heinous crime. Well, my brothers and sisters, let me say self-examination is what's needed right now because what are some of the possible reasons then? We, we might never commit that heinous crime, but what are some of the things that we might be doing in our life? What are some of the things that might be causing us to be not too far-fetched from Barabbas? Because again, we need to examine our own hearts. How did this Israelite become a murderer? Maybe, just listen, maybe, maybe his aspirations for worldly success trumped his aspirations for spiritual success. Just maybe. Maybe he started dating someone he knew that he should not be dating. Maybe. And by the way, I've seen this. You know the prophet said? Not in these exact words, but she said, for some, the day they say, I do, is the day that they say, I don't, to Christ. You know, I have so many people that we counsel now, they come to me and say, Brother Norlin, I, my, 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 just recently, a young man began to, to, to date this young, this young lady, and my wife and I sat down with him and shared with him all the reasons why he should not be doing this, and every time now, at least once every two weeks or once a month, he calls me and says, Brother Norlin, I can't take it anymore. No longer go to church, my brothers and sisters. Why? That person that he chose to date. Maybe, my brother and sister, Barabbas got into a relationship that he knew that he should be in, and that lady drew his heart away from God. Just, just maybe. No man comes to sudden ruin. Maybe he thought his parents and the Bible and the spirit of prophecy and Adventism, this, this is just too strict. This religion is just so restrictive. 
Why are they, you know, I just heard this recently. The Sunday Adventist church, they just have so many rules, so many do's and don'ts. I mentioned it last night. Why do I have to be told what to watch and what to wear and where to go and who to date? It, it, it is just too restricted. Just maybe Barabbas says, you know, enough to, with these rules. No more Bible, no more spirit of Christ. My parents, no more Adventism. It's just too strict. Maybe, my brother and sister, that happened to Barabbas. Maybe he found himself hanging out with a cruel crowd in school. And, and, and because others were too focused on the Bible and spirit of Christ. He said, look, look, I want to hang out with the cruel people. Maybe. Maybe he started doing things on Sabbath that in his heart of hearts, he knew in his heart of hearts were wrong. This may be my brother and sister. He began to compromise and not guard the sacred hours of the Sabbath. Maybe, my brothers and sisters, he lingered on Facebook or YouTube for too long, and that, that ad pops up, and then he began to watch that ad. And by the way, you know how many people have come to me and say, you know what? The reason I got into pornography and, and these things is I was, on, I was on YouTube, and I was watching a sermon, and then I saw this, this ad pop up, and then I clicked on this ad, and the, the ad showed a little bit too much, and then that, that brought back some lustful desires, and before you know it, I'm fully watching pornography, or watching movies, or watching, or, 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 or playing games again. It, it, it just triggered a thought, and it, it, it had a, it, that, 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 that ad had a music song in it, and it, it led me to go back and listen to that, that rap album that I, that, that I thought I no longer had, but I threw up, but all I did was search YouTube, and I had full access to that, that, that album that I threw up once, once before. So maybe Barabbas was listening to his favorite preacher. And as he was listening, an ad popped up and he clicked on that ad. Do you guys catch what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? And then maybe Barabbas got into pornography. Maybe he got into music. Maybe he got into, I'm just saying maybe. What, the point that I'm making is no man comes to sudden ruin, my brothers and sisters. It is a gradual process. He didn't wake up one day and said, I'm going to be a murderer tomorrow. It was a gradual process. No man comes to sudden ruin. Somebody says, no, maybe. I've been too fanatical about how I dress. Maybe I've been too fanatical about what I'm eating. Maybe, I, I'm, I, maybe I'm just too fanatical about the things that I'm eating and watching and, 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 and listening to. I, you know, maybe I've just been too fanatical. Maybe I need to loosen up a little bit and be more like my other friends in the, the less conservative school. Just I'm, I'm hypothetically speaking, I don't know my brothers and sisters, maybe. The point that I'm making is no man comes to sudden ruin. It's a gradual process. What am I saying, my brothers and sisters? This is what I'm saying. If you found that you've fallen away from God, retract your steps. Retract your steps. Trace them. Watch your steps and say, look, these are the steps that I've taken, and now I see that I'm, I'm, I, I, I've slipped and I'm sliding away from God, and I must retract myself and go back to the place where I first saw the light. Am I making sense? The point that I'm making is that no man comes to sudden rule. It is gradual, my brothers and sisters. And if we are falling away mentally or spiritually or physically or emotionally, whatever it is, my brothers and sisters, we need to retract ourselves, maybe allowing our negative emotion, a negative mindset, a negative emotion, and negative thoughts to linger too long in our minds. And as a result now, we, we have uh, degraded spiritually, just maybe, my brothers and sisters. You know, there's an old saying, you can't prevent a bird from pitching on your head, but you can prevent it from laying in there. Don't let those thoughts linger for too long. When that bird, that bird of negative thoughts pitches on your head, swat it away. Don't let it linger. Maybe those negative thoughts lingered in Barabbas' mind too long. The point that I'm making is, no man comes to sudden move. Notice, notice these words. Listen, this is, these are powerful. It says, it is not God that blinds the eyes of men or hardens their heart. He sends them, what's this word? Light. Light to do what? To correct. to correct their errors and to lead them in the safe paths. It is by the rejection of this light that the eyes are blinded and the heart, what saints talk to me, hardened. Now notice, read this with me, read this with me. Often the process is gradual and almost imperceptible. 
Are you catching this? No man comes to sudden ruin. Often the process is gradual and almost imperceptible. It says light comes to the soul through God's word and through his servants or by the direct agency of his spirit. But when one ray of light is what, saints? Disregard. How many rays of light? One. Now, remember last night? How many was it? What other rich on your ruler? Thou lacketh one thing. But when one ray of light is disregarded, there is a, now listen, there is a partial benumbing of the spiritual perceptions, and the second revealing of light is less clearly discerned, so the darkness increases until the night is in, until it is night in the soul. These are serious words, my brother and sister. No man comes to sudden ruin. That's why the Bible says, walk in the light as he is in the light. When God reveals light to us, don't make the mistake of saying, I will do it tomorrow. Or as I said last night, don't make the mistake of saying, I am not convicted. <laughs> Faith is ours to exercise. Joyful feeling is God's to give. Never make the mistake of not walking in the light, my brother and sister. Night in the soul. So now, the seventh day Adventist. He finds himself sitting there in a dungeon, hopeless, my brothers and sisters. His mind runs back to what could have been. He hears the hammers and the chisels and the nails as his cross is being shaped. The prison door now begins to squeak open. Are you guys with me? He begins to hear his name, Barabbas, and his mind is, is saying, my time of execution is at hand. And with fear, he shrinks back and begins to think about all those lessons that he has recited as an Israelite when he was a child. He remembered the book of Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus. All these things begin to be recited in his mind and how his mother pled and cried and prayed. And now he is about to be executed, a Seventh-day Adventist. And he hears his name, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. He thinks the cloud is clamoring for his death. The cross is prepared, and his, his face changes, my brothers and sisters, as he realizes that the cloud is saying, give us Barabbas, give us Barabbas. In other words, they're saying, let him go free. Our subject, again, is the biography of Barabbas. Asking him for his freedom. And as he's bringing out, brought out now to Pilate's hall, he sees there the lovely Jesus, my brother and sister. And I can imagine he's saying, what is he doing here? And he hears the word of Pilate saying, who will he that I release unto you? The innocent Jesus or Barabbas? The one who you can find no fault with. Or the one that has committed murderer. He's a murderer. The one who's a robber, sedition, insurrection, and a notable prison. Who will he that I release unto you, Barabbas the murderer or the innocent Jesus? And the crowd says, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. My brother and sister, I can imagine he's baffled and confused. Because he's saying, I know for sure that this man hasn't done anything wrong. I, I've seen him. I've heard him. I, I know that he's not guilty. And Pilate's compromising plot fails. The crowd says, give us Barabbas. And I can imagine as Barabbas' chains and, are, are, and his hands are loose and the chains are released from his leg, I can imagine he escapes quickly before the crowd and, and, and Pilate changes their mind. Because he knows, he says, I know for sure that I'm guilty. I know for sure I'm a murderer. I know for sure the sadistic act that I've committed. I know the insurrection. I know for sure that I am a notable prisoner. I know it. If they let me free, let me run and be free. Now I can imagine as com Pilate's compromising plot fails and Barabbas runs off and he, and as he's lost in a crowd, I can imagine maybe about 30 minutes later, he comes back and he's hiding in a crowd. And he says, I want to see if this is really going to take place. 
because I know that I am guilty, I, and I know that he's innocent, and, he, and he's saying, I, 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 I want to see what's going to take place as he accepts the freedom that's not his. Hey, guys, listen to me. And as he goes back, and he sees Jesus stretched out on the cross, that central cross that belongs to him, my friend. And as he looks in Jesus' back and he sees the bones of Jesus speaking, he sees the nails being driven through Jesus' hand, he saw the cross, uh, Jesus hanging on that cross, and the crown of thorns pressed against his brow, and he saw the, the spikes running through Jesus' feet, and he says, I, he, this is really happening. He's really taking my place. The innocent in the place of the guilty. Are you guys catching what I'm talking about tonight, my brothers and sisters? Now, the story tells, tells us two things. How many things? Two. Number one, we all are like Barabbas in that we all have sinned. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, how many? All have sinned and come short. Of his glory. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death. So we are all like Barabbas, my brothers and sisters, as in that central cross belongs to you and belongs to I, but Jesus, the innocent, took the place of the guilty and said, you know what? I know that he deserves to die. I know that he's a notable prisoner. I know that he's committed murder. I know that he's an insurrection. I know that he's committed sedition. I know that he's a notable prisoner. But Jesus says, I will take his place. I will pay the price. You are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20 says. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray, and have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Christ, the iniquity of us all. We are all like Barabbas, my brothers and sisters, in that we are all guilty, and we all deserve to die. That central cross is both you and I. We're told that he died a death which was ours, so that we may receive the life which was his. With his stripes, we are healed. Barabbas, son of father, a criminal, deserving to die. Now, how many things did I say this story told, tells us? Now, I'll name one. The second thing that this story tells us, that Barabbas, son of father, is also you and I. What am I mean, my brothers and sisters? We are all like Barabbas in that we are all son of father. Listen, no matter what your name is, God showed us, my brothers and sisters, that when his son died on the cross, it was for all of us because we are all son of father. You guys catch that? What father wants their sons to die? My brothers and sisters, we are told in the book of John 16 and verse 27, for the Father himself loveth thee, because he hath loved me and hath believed that I came out from God. We're told that God himself loves us, my friend. We are all son of father. You know how most people look at the plan of redemption? They look at it this way. Man sinned. And then the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost rally together and say, oh, you know, you know man sinned. We, what, what, what should we do? And, and the Father said, they've sinned. Let me, let me zap them out of existence. And when the father was about to execute them, then Jesus jumped in front of him and said, No, father, my blood, my blood, don't kill him. No, my friend. We're told that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. When Jesus' hand was spiked and the nails were driven and he felt that pain, my brothers and sisters, the father also felt the pain. Why? Because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The Father himself loveth thee, the Bible says, my friend. Is anyone listening to me tonight? This is the gospel. This is the plan of salvation, my brother and sister. The truth is that we are all son of father. We all deserve to die, my brother and sisters. We all belong to that central cross. But praise God, we are all son of father in that God desires more than anything else to save his children. 
Can a woman forget the, her suckling child that she should not have compassion of the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. Yet God says, I will not forget thee. Let me close up. The truth is, my brother and sister, is that when Jesus took our place on that cross, not just Barabbas, when he took our place on that cross, the Son of Father, Jesus, died in our place. And now we have been, praise God, revived, restored, reconciled, and redeemed to become sons and daughters of God. Amen. Through the fellowship of his suffering. We're all son of Father. Go with me to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. This is so beautiful now. Watch how it all comes together. 1 John chapter 3. Notice, my brothers and sisters. See, that name, that, remember we talked about that name. That name, my brother and sister, Barabbas. Bar, son, Abba, God. Son of God. God is saying that name that was mistakenly given to that, that boy. Son of Father. When he died on that central cross, God wanted to show us, my brothers and sisters, that we all deserve to die, but we are all son of father. Why? Because that central cross not only belongs to Barabbas, it belongs to you and I. And God is saying, because you are all son of father, you are all my children, I want to show you that greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for a friend. I want to show you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to show you that you belong on that cross, but because we are all son of father, not just Barabbas, that name is a universal name for all my children. That mother thought that she was just naming that boy son of father. But she did not realize that she was giving the world a name. We are all son of father. And our father, my brother and sister, says, son, you are my son, you are son of father, and I want you to show the rest of my sons, son of father, what love I bestow upon them by giving my only begotten son to die on their place, and I want you to show them that you're not, they're, they're your son of father, but they're also all son of father, and also Barabbas is son of father. We praise God, my brothers and sisters, we are all son of father. What a name, my brothers and sisters. Now, where are we in the Bible? We're in what? Notice what it says now. Behold, what man of what? Saints, talk to me. Love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called, read it with me, my brothers, sons of God, my brothers and sisters. How did he manifest that love? When Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now are we what? The sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. Now watch what it says now in verse 3, my brothers and sisters. Now that we realize that we are all son of father, we all deserve to die, but Christ says, you're all son of father, I'm going to die. Watch what the Bible says now we'll do in verse 3. Now watch. It says, and every man that hath his hope, what hope? In the fact that we're all sons of God, what do they do? He purifieth himself, how? Even as he is pure, my brother and sister. This is beautiful, my brother and sisters. This is the gospel. We're all son of father. We're all Barabbas. It says, he that hath this hope purifieth himself. Now, again, this story shows us two things. We're all Barabbas in that we're guilty. It also shows us that we're all Barabbas. We're all sons and daughters of God. Now go to Psalm 119, because now I'm thinking about this now. Now remember, no man comes to sudden ruin. Now, no man comes to sudden ruin. Now my question is this. How could Barabbas have purified himself? How could son of father have prevented himself? Because the Bible says, he that has his hope now, that the fact that we are sons of God, he that has his hope purified himself, even has, he is pure, Jesus is pure. So my question is this, my brother and sister. What could have prevented Barabbas from this condition? Psalm 119 and verse 9. Notice what the Bible says. Psalm 119 and verse 9. What could have prevented Barabbas 
from this pit, and how could he have purified himself as he was pure, recognizing that he's son of God? Psalm 119, verse 9, the Bible says, listen, wherewithal shall a young man do what? Cleanse his way. Do we have an answer? Yes. By taking heed thereto according to thy, thy word. Verse 11, verse 10, the Bible says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. What did Barabbas do, my friends? He wandered from God's commandments. And God says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By giving heed to, call it to thy word. And Barabbas wandered away from God. Now, notice what it says now in verse 11. Verse 11, the Bible says, Thy word have I done what, saints? Hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God is saying the key is in the word of God, my brother and sister. Barabbas let his devotion slip. Barabbas let the word of God slip. Barabbas came to church but did not heed the preacher. Barabbas came to church, my brothers and sisters, and heard piercing words that touched the heart, and he did not go home and make changes. He did not allow the word of God to purify and cleanse him so that he could be pure as God is pure. So what's my counsel to you tonight, my friends, as we close? Notice what it says here. It says, in the great conflict before us. By the way, let me see the hands of those who want to be true to God. You want to keep true to God? Now, this is for you then. It says, in the great conflict before us, he who would keep true to Christ, now we all say we want to be true to Christ, must penetrate deeper than the opinions and doctrines of men. Now listen, my message to ministers, young and old, is to guard jealously. Your hours for, read it with me. What else? Bible study and what else? And self-examination. What are they? What else? And what else? Now, watch the practicality of the spirit of prophecy. Now, watch how practical this is, my brother and sister. Give us practical steps. It says, set aside a portion of each day for a study of the scriptures and communion with God. Now, listen. Thus, what's thus? Talk to me. What's thus? Study of the scriptures and communion with God. Set a portion of the side of each day. Thus, you'll obtain spiritual strength and will grow in favor with God. Did Barabbas grow in favor with God? He grew away from God. So you could, we can begin to deduce, my brothers and sisters, that the fact that Barabbas became a hardened criminal and a murderer and sedition and insurrection and a noble prisoner is that he grew away from God by growing away from the studying of the scripture, by not setting aside a portion of each day. Thus he will grow in, obtain spiritual strength and will grow in favor with God. He alone, my friends, can give you noble aspirations. He alone, my friends, can fashion the character of the similitude, of the divine similitude. Draw near to him in earnest prayer, and he will fill your hearts with high and holy purposes and with deep earnest longing for purity and what else? And clearness of thought. One more, in closing. Thus spoke us page 100. Now, this is from the book, Great Controversy, page 519. Watch what this says. Great Controversy, page 519. It says here, Satan well knows that, what's this word here? All whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures will be overcome by his attacks. Therefore, he invents every possible device to do what? Engross the mind. He invents every possible device. He invents every possible device. He invents every possible device to engross the mind. And let's park here for a moment. What's this word? Reject. Now, let me tell you what it doesn't say. It doesn't say reject. It says neglect. Now, what's the difference? Reject is, I'm not going to study. Reject is, I'm not going to pray. Reject is, I'm not going to have self-examination. That's, that's reject. It doesn't say reject. It says what? Neglect. neglect is, I have every intention to. I have every plan to. Maybe later, maybe tomorrow. Th that, that is my plan. I plan on doing it. It's not reject. It's neglect. 
neglect is I have every intention to do it. But I have such a busy schedule at work today. I have every intention of doing it, but I have to go and feed the homeless. I have every intention of doing it, but I have so much going on at church. I have every intention to do it, but it doesn't matter what's next. We're told prayer is the breath of the soul. And every one of us knows that you don't live long without oxygen. And that's why there's so many people that's coming to the church that has a name that they live with, but they are dead. No breath. Cold Christian. Pulseless Christian. Because we have not partaken of the breath of the soul through prayer. Don't let these devices, my brothers and sisters, Facebook, Instagram, cell phone, news channels, keeping up with coronavirus, all these things are reasons why people neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures. Barabbas was overcome by Satan's attack. Why? Because he neglected, which later rejected prayer and the searching of the scriptures. My friends, that's the biography of Barabbas. The question is, what is our biography? The truth is, we're all Barabbas in that we're all criminals who sinned and, and defied God's law. You might not commit a murder like Barabbas, but we've all broken God's commandments, and we all have the same death sentence that Barabbas had. But praise God, we are also all sons of Father, sons of God. And God is saying, like Barabbas, and though you are deserving to be in that center of cross, my son went there to take your place, the innocent in the place of the guilty. Let us pray together. Father, we're so thankful tonight to come to the realization that we're all Barabbas, Lord. We're all hardened criminals who are breakers of God's commandments. But praise God through Jesus Christ, we are also sons of God, son of Father. And through your Son and the merits of Jesus Christ, we can all, my, 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 my Father, we can say, Abba, we can all come before you, Father, guiltless because of the merits of your Son, because he died for the death which is ours so that we can receive the life which is his. And my prayer tonight, Lord, and my desire, my aspiration is that all of us, Father, will accept the grace and the mercies that you've bestowed upon us, and that we may walk in newness of life, Lord, and may we trace the steps of Barabbas and see that it was a gradual process that he came to ruin, Lord. And as a result, we pray, O oh God, that we will not make the same mistake, that we will not neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures, that we will, in fact, guard jealously the hours of prayer, study, and self-examination, and set aside a portion of each day for spending time with our Lord. And there might be someone here tonight that says, Lord, I realize that I need to do better. And tonight, I'm taking my stand. If you're here tonight and that's your stand, raise your hand wherever you are. We're going to pray for you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, my wife and I, we were in New York. And at 6 a.m., uh, 12 p.m., 6 p.m., we heard this bell go off. Every single day, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., 6 p.m. And we wonder, what is this bell? What, what is this, this loud, resounding sound that goes throughout the entire community of New York? And we come to find out that it was a Muslim mosque. And at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. every day, those bell goes off, and every single Muslim knows, once you hear the sound of the bell, no matter what you're doing, stop and pray. The Bible says, evening and morning at noon would I pray, and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Even in the midst of your busy schedule, my friends, there are persons that take 15-minute smoke breaks. We could take 15-minute prayer breaks. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, we shall set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved.
May God bless you. We have, uh, again, just like last night, we have some flash drives and we have uh, my wife's cookbook that's available for sale for those who are interested as you're walking out. They also have many materials along the lines of some of the things that we're going to be covering this week. Um, if you're interested in those materials, you can see my wife. All of the flash drives, we are, for this week, we're giving 25% off everything on the table except the cookbook. So any flash drive that you want to get, you can get 25% off. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we'll look at quenching Jesus' thirst. We'll look at the woman at the well. Have you been blessed so far, my friends? As we look at Barabbas, as we look at the rich young ruler, we also want to look at our own hearts. Tomorrow night, we're going to look at the subject, quenching Jesus' thirst. We'll look at the woman at the well. May God bless. Any announcements, Pastor? 7 o'clock tomorrow, same time, same place. May God bless.